Hello, everybody. This is so exciting. Oh my gosh. We are, this is a dream. This is such an exciting group of actors and audience members. It's, it's a dream. It's beautiful. Um, I'm Eric Love. I'm director of education here at Northern Stage, and this is sort of like a special invite-only place to be tonight, so we're so grateful you're here. Uh, take a moment to turn off your cell phones, mm -hmm. and uh, in case of an emergency, come on right down and, and exit out here, and if you need to leave while the show is in progress, please go upstairs and out the other lobby. Um, we could not do all these education programs without our education family of donors, and especially with the Pussycat Foundation and Clinton Bonnie Swift supporting the Bridge Up program. We really appreciate you guys coming to this event to support us as well. Um, also, buy your Sound of Music tickets, unless you're in the show, that would be weird, um, because it's selling out fast and we hope everyone can see the show. Um, so, Project Inspiration. We've got a group of actors called Boot Camp Actors, and the Boot Camp Company are juniors and seniors who want to apply for professional conservatory programs, and as you know, it's a really competitive industry right now, because there's thousands of people auditioning for just 20 spots at these top universities. So, we've got, a, a lot of them do a lot of musical theater and straight plays, but have no access to do Shakespeare. On the other side, at the beginning of our education program, we have Bridge Up, Shakespeare in the Schools, and that is a program that goes to eight area schools within about a 45-minute radius. We work with over 400 area kids between third and fifth grade, and we do five-week residency to do a half an hour Shakespeare production. But we realized we go into these schools and spend a lot of the first week just trying to convince these kids that Shakespeare is going to be cool. <laughs> just being like, we swear this is fun. You will love it, I promise. And by the end, they do love it. But we were like, wait a second. Let's connect these two programs. The older kids need the Shakespeare training. The younger kids need the Shakespeare exposure. Mm -hmm. So this is a 45-minute adaptation of Romeo and Juliet that we've toured to uh, uh, actually 10 schools during seven different performances and reach over 500 kids between third grade and fifth grade. Um, we are also, the production elements are like they will do in the show. So everyone is seated on stage. We're using very simple props and costumes. It's very stripped down so that it could all be about the spoken word and the beauty of Shakespeare. Um, in this performance, you will see that the Capulets are all in red and the Montagues are all in blue for your viewing pleasure. Um, we also have Mercutio and the Prince are in purple because they are of higher status. And then the, uh, no, Mercutio and Paris are in purple and the Prince is in gold because he's the man. Um, <laughs> what else? So uh, yes, and the Friar is in black. Another inspiration for this was we love to use sound designs with these because just a little sound can really bring a world to life. And I was really inspired by Sergei Prokofiev's ballet score for Romeo and Juliet, written in 1935. It's so cinematic, it's so exciting, so we fractured that soundscape into this production that you're about to see. Um, we'll do a little quick talk back afterwards, and that's about it. Oh, also, we are doing this how we do it in the schools, which is gymnasium lights, the audience is fully lit so we can connect directly with them. And we've done this in classrooms smaller than this stage and we've also done this in gymnasiums three times the size. So it's a flexible production. All right, without any further ado, please enjoy the Boot Camp Bridge Up Tour production of <laughs> Romeo and Juliet. Two households, both alike in dignity. In fair Verona, where we lay our scene, from ancient grudge break to new mutiny. Where, where civil, civil blood, blood makes, makes civil, civil hands, hands unclean. unclean. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair, pair of star-crossed star lovers take, take their, their life, whose, whose misadventured piteous overthrows doth with, with their, their death their parents' strife. <laughs> Draw thy tool. Here comes one of the house of the Montagues. I will bite my thumb at him, which is a disgrace to him if he bears it. Do you bite your thumb at me, sir? No, sir, I do not bite my thumb at you, sir. But I bite my thumb, sir. Do you quarrel, sir? Quarrel, sir? No, sir. If you do, sir, I am for you. I serve as good a man as you. You lie. Draw if you be men. Gregory, remember thy swashing blow. <laughs> <laughs> Put up 
dropped your sword. You know not what you do. What? Art thou drawn among these heartless hinds? Turn thee, Benvolio! Look upon thy death! I do but keep the peace. Put up thy sword. What? Drawn and talk of peace? I hate the word! Have at thee, coward. <laughs> <laughs> Enemies to peace, throw your mistempered weapons to the ground. And hear the sentence of your moved prince. Oh. Three civil brawls, bred of an airy word, by thee, old Capulet and Montague, have thrice disturbed the quiet of our streets. <laughs> If ever you disturb our streets again, your lives shall pay the forfeit of the peace. Good morrow, cousin. Is the day so young? The new struck nine. Ay me. Sad hours seem long. What sadness lengthens Romeo's hours? Not having that which having makes them short. In love. Out. Of love? Out of her favor where I am in love. Tell me in sadness, who is that you love? In sadness, cousin, I do love a woman. <laughs> I aimed so near when I supposed you loved. She hath forsworn to love, and in that vow do I live dead, that live to tell it now. Be ruled by me, forget to think of her. Oh, teach me how I should forget to think. By giving liberty unto thine <coughs> eyes, examine other beauties. Farewell, thou canst not teach me to forget. I'll pay that doctrine, or else die in debt. <laughs> You as bound as well as I, in penalty alike, and tis not hard, I think, for men so old as we to keep the peace. Of honorable reckoning are you both, and pity tis you lived at odds so long. But now, my lord, what say you to my suit? Let two more summers wither in their pride, ere we may think her ripe to be a bride. But woo her, gentle Paris, get her heart. My will to her consent is but a part. This night I hold an old accustomed feast, and you among the store. One more, most welcome, makes my number more. <laughs> Go, sirrah, find those persons out whose names are written there. Why, Romeo, art thou mad? Not mad, but bound more than a madman is, whipped. Ah! Good evening, good fellow. God, you got in. Uh, I pray you, sir, can you read? Aye, if I know the letters and the language. You say honestly, resty Mary. Say, fellow, I can read. Ah. <laughs> uh. Mercutio. Oh, I like him. <laughs> Mine uncle Capulet. Oh, he's annoying. <laughs> My fair niece Rosaline. She's pretty. <laughs> oh, oh, a fair assembly. Oh, whither should they come? To supper, to our house. Whose house? My master's. Indeed, I should have asked you that before. <laughs> now I will tell you without asking. My master is the great rich Capulet. And you, if you be not of the house of the Montagues, I pray you, come and cross a cup of wine. <laughs> <laughs> At this same ancient feast of Capulet sups the fair Rosaline whom thou so lovest. Go thither, and with unattainted eye compare her face with some that I shall show, and I will make thee think thy swan a crow. 
I'll go along. No such sight to be shown, but to rejoice in the splendor of mine own. Consent gives strength to make them fly. Juliet, the county stays. Go, girl, seek happy nights to happy days. <laughs> But tis no what to go. Why, may one ask? I dreamt a dream tonight. And so did I. Well, what was yours? That dreamers often lie. In bed asleep while they do dream things true. Oh, then I see Queen Mab hath been with you. She is the fairy's midwife, and she comes in shape no bigger than an agate stone. And in this state, she gallops night by night through lovers' brains, and then they dream of love. Sometimes she drives over a soldier's neck, and then dreams he of cutting foreign throats, <laughs> of hell, five <laughs> spasms <laughs> deep, <laughs> and then anon drums in his ear. This is the very love. Peace, Turkish, your peace. Thou talkest of nothing. <laughs> True. <laughs> I talk of nothing but dreams. The children of an idle fantasy, begot of nothing but vain fantasy, and more inconstant than the wind! This wind you talk of blows us from ourselves. Supper is done, and we shall come too late. I fear too early. For my mind misgives some consequence, yet hanging in the stars shall bitterly begin his fearful date with this night's revels. But he that hath steerage of my course, direct my sail. You are welcome, gentlemen. Come, musicians. Doth enrich the hand of yonder knight. Oh, she doth teach the torches to burn bright. Did my heart love till now? Forswear its sight, for I ne'er saw true beauty till this night. This by his voice should be a Montague. Now, by the stock in honor of my kin, to strike him dead, I hold it not a sin. Why have Kingsman, wherefore storm you, sir? Why, uncle, tis a Montague, our foe. Young Romeo, is it? Tis he, that villain Romeo. I'll not endure him. He shall be injured. But, uncle, tis a shame. You are a saucy boy. 
<laughs> I will withdraw, but this intrusion, now seeming sweet, shall convert into bitter gall. Profane with my unworthiest hand, this holy shrine. The gentle sin is this. My lips, two blushing pilgrims, ready stand to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss. Good pilgrim, you do wrong your hand too much, which mannerly devotion shows in this. For saints have hands that pilgrims' hands do touch. And palm to palm, as holy palmers kiss. Have not saints lips and holy palmers too? I, pilgrim, lips that they must use in prayer. Oh, then, dear saint, let lips do what hands do. They pray. Grant thou, lest faith turn to despair. Saints do not move, though grant for prayer's sake. Then move not, while my prayer's effect I take. <laughs> Madam! Your mother craves a word with you. <laughs> what is her mother? Mary Bachelor. Her mother is the lady of the house. Is she a Capulet? Oh, dear account, my life is my foe's death. Come hither, nurse. What is yon gentleman? His name is Romeo and a Montague, the only son of your great enemy. My only love sprung from my only hate. Too early seen, unknown, and known too late. Come, let's away. The strangers all are gone. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks? It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. It is my lady, oh, it is my love. Oh, that she knew she were. See how she leans her cheek upon her hand. Oh, that I were a glove upon that hand, that I might touch that cheek. I mean. Oh, she speaks. Oh, speak again, bright angel. Oh, Romeo. Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Or, if thou wilt not, be but sworn my love and I'll no longer be a Capulet. <laughs> shall I hear more or shall I speak at this? <laughs> thy name, that is my enemy. Thou art thyself, though not a Montague. What Montague? No, oh, be some other name. What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Romeo, doth thy name, and for thy name, which is no part of thee, take all myself! I take yet thy word! <laughs> call me but love, and I'll be new baptized. Henceforth I never will be Romeo. What matter thou, that thus the screen in the night so stumblest on my counsel? By a name, I know not how to tell thee who I am. My name, dear saint, is hateful to myself because it is an enemy to thee. Art thou not Romeo and the Montague? Neither, fair saint, if either thee dislike. O oh, Romeo, if thou dost love, pronounce it faithfully. Or, if thou think that I am too quickly one, thou frown and be perverse and say thee nay. So thou wilt woo. But else, not for the world. In truth, fair Montague, I am too fond. <laughs> Lady, by yonder blessed moon, I swear. I swear not by the moon, the inconstant moon. Well, what shall I swear by? Do not swear at all. Or, if thou wilt, swear by thy gracious self, which is the god of my idolatry, and I'll believe thee. If my heart's dear love. Well, do not swear. Yeah. 
Although I joy in thee, I have no joy of this contract tonight. My bounty is as boundless as the sea, my love as deep. The more I give thee, the more I have, for both are infinite. Joy! I hear some noise within. I'm off, good nurse. A sweet Montague, be true. Blessed, blessed night. I am afeard. Being a knight, all this is but a dream. Too flattering sweet to be substantial. Your work, dear Romeo, and good night indeed. If thy bent of love be honorable, thy purpose marriage. Meet at church tomorrow, and all my fortunes at thy foot I lay, and follow thee, my lord, throughout the world. Madam! I come anon, but... If thou meanst not well, I do beseech thee. Madam! By and by I come to cease thy stoop to leave me to my grief. Tomorrow will I send. So thrive, my soul. A thousand times, good night. A thousand times the worst to want, I write. Good night. Good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say good night till it be morrow. Sleep dwell upon thine eyes, peace in thy breast. Would I were sleep in peace, so sweet to rest. Oh, mickle is the powerful grace that lies in herbs, plants, stones, and their true qualities. Good morrow, father. Benedici te. <laughs> <laughs> Young son, it argues a distempered head so soon to bid good morrow to thy bed. Or, if that's not so, then here I hit it right. Our Romeo hath not been in bed tonight. That last is true. The sweet arrest was mine. <laughs> Be plain, good son, and homely in thy drift. Riddling confession finds but riddling shrift. Then plainly know my heart's dear love is set on the fair daughter of rich Capulet. As mine on hers, so hers is set on mine. But this I pray, that thou consent to marry us today. Holy Saint Francis, what a change is here. Here comes the lady. <laughs> Juliet, if the measure of thy joy be heaped like mine, and that thy skill be more to blaze in it, then sweeten with thy breath this neighbor air. But my true love is grown in such excess, I cannot sum up some of half my wealth. But come. Come with me, and we will make short work. For by your leaves you shall not stay alone till Holy Church incorporate two in one. I pray thee, good Mercutio, let's retire. The day is hot, the Capulets abroad, and if we meet, we shall not scape a brawl. Come. Come, thou art as hot a jack in thy mood as any in Italy. By my head, here come the Capulets. By my heel, I care not. Gentlemen, good den. A word with one of you. And but one word with one of us? Couple it with something. Make it a word and a blow. Mercutio, thou consortst with Romeo? Zoom's consort? Either withdraw unto some private place and reason coldly of your grievances or else depart. Here all eyes gaze on us. Men's eyes were made to look, so let them gaze. I will not budge for no man's pleasure. I well, peace be with you, sir. Here comes my man. Romeo, the hate I bear thee can afford no better term than this. Thou art a villain. Tybalt. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I have to love thee doth much excuse the appertaining rage to such a greeting. Villain am I none. Therefore, farewell. I see thou knowest me not. Boy, this shall not excuse the injuries that thou hast done me. Therefore, turn and draw. Tibble, you rat catcher. Will you walk? What wouldst thou have with me? Good king of cats, nothing but one of your nine lives. I am for you. Oh, gentle Mercutio, put thy rapier off. Come, sir. Your Posado.
battle came here between us. I was hurt under your arm. I thought off for the best. Throw me into some house, then valley, or I shall faint. A plague on both your houses you have made. Worms meet of me. My very friend hath got his mortal hurt in my behalf. My reputation stained with Tybalt's slander. Tybalt, that an hour hath been my kinsman. Oh, sweet Juliet. Oh, Romeo! Romeo, brave Mercutio's dead. Here comes the furious Tybalt back again. Now, Tybalt, take the villain back again that late thou gavest me. For Mercutio's soul is but a little way above our heads, staying for thine to keep him company. Either thou or I, or both, must go with him. Thou wretched boy that didst consort him here shall with him hence. This shall determine that. <laughs> <laughs> Fortune's fool! Where are the vile beginners of this fray? Tybalt, my cousin. Prince, as thou art true, for blood of ours, shed blood of Montague. Montague, who began this bloody fray? Tybalt, here slain, whom Romeo's hand did slay. There lies the man slain by young Romeo that slew thy kinsman, brave Mercutio. He is father to Romeo Montague. Affection makes him false. He speaks not true. I beg for justice, which thou, prince, must give. Romeo slew Tybalt. Romeo must not live. Romeo slew him. He slew Mercutio, who now the price of his dear blood doth owe. Not Romeo, prince. He was Mercutio's friend. His fault concludes but what the law should end. The life of Tybalt! And for that offense, immediately do we exile him hence. Romeo shall hence in haste, else when he's found, that hour is his last. <laughs> Such a waggoner as Phaeton would whip you in the west and bring in cloudy night immediately. Oh, come, gentle night. Come, loving, black-browed night. Give me my Romeo. And when he shall die, take him and cut him out into little stars. And he will make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with night and pay no worship to the garish sun. <laughs> oh, I mean, what news? Uh, why dost thou wring thy hands? Oh, well, a day! He's gone! He's killed! He's dead! Can heaven be so envious? Romeo can, though heaven cannot! Oh, Romeo, Romeo! What devil art thou that thou stormest me thus? Oh, too! Too! Oh, the best friend I have! That ever I should live to see thee dead. Is, is Romeo slaughtered, and is Tybalt dead? My dear love's cousin and my dear lord. <sighs> Romeo, Tybalt is gone, and Romeo banished. Romeo that killed him, he is banished. Oh God, did Romeo's hand shed Tybalt's blood? It did, it did, alas the day it did. Shame come to Romeo! Blister be thy tongue for such a way! 
flesh. He was not born into shame. Upon his brow, shame is a shame to sit. Tybalt is dead. And Romeo, banished. That banished. That one word banished. Romeo is banished. There is no bound in that word death. No words can that well sound. Hide to your chamber. I'll find Romeo to comfort you. Oh, find him. And bid him come take his last farewell. Father, what news? What less the doomsday is the prince's doom? A gentler judgment vanished from his lips. Not body's death, but body's banishment. <laughs> banishment? Be merciful, say death. For there is no world without Verona walls, but purgatory, torture, hell itself. It's banished and is banished from the world. And world's exile is death. Oh, deadly sin. Oh, rude unthankfulness. This is dear mercy, and thou seest it not. Tis torture and not mercy. Heaven is here where Juliet lives. But I am banished. And sayest thou yet that exile is not death, but banished to kill me? Banished? Oh, friar, the damn use of that word in hell! I come from Lady Juliet. Welcome, then. Stand up. Stand up. Stand and you'll be a man. For Juliet's sake, for her sake, rise and stand. And speakest thou, Juliet? How is it with her? Where is she? And how doth she? And what says my concealed lady to our cancelled love? Oh, she says nothing, sir, but weeps and weeps. And Tybalt calls and then on Romeo cries. As if that name shot from the deadly level of a gun did murder her. As that name's cursed hand murdered her kinsman. What roused thee, man? Thy Juliet is alive. Go, get thee to thy love as was decreed. But look, thou stay not till the watch be set. For then thou canst not pass to Mantua, where thou shalt live, till we can call thee back. My lord, I'll tell my lady you will come. How well my comfort is revived by this. Farewell. Good night. out, sir, so unluckily that we have had no time to move our daughter. Look you, she loved her kinsman Tybalt dearly. These times of woe afford no time to woo. Tonight she is mewed up to her heaviness. Wife, go you to her ere you go to bed. Acquaint her here of my son Paris love, mm -hmm. and bid her, mark you me, Oh, Thursday, tell her. She shall be married to this noble earl. But what say you to Thursday? My lord, I would that Thursday were tomorrow. Well, get you gone. Oh, Thursday, be it then. Wilt thou be gone? It is not yet near day. It was... The nightingale, and not the lark that pierced the fearful hollow of thy mirror. Believe me, love, it was the nightingale. It was the lark, the herald of the morn, no nightingale. I must be gone and live, or stay and die. It is the lark that sings so out of tune. Oh, now be gone. More light and light it grows. More light and light, more dark and dark our woes. Farewell. Farewell, one kiss, and I'll descend. Art thou gone so? Love, Lord, I, husband, friend. Farewell. Oh, fortune. 
fortune. All men call thee fickle. Be fickle, fortune. For then I hope thou wilt not keep him long, but send him back. Why, how now, Juliet? <laughs> Madam, I am not well. Evermore weeping for your cousin's death. Yet let me weep for such a feeling loss. Well, now I'll tell thee joyful tidings, girl. And joy comes well in such a needy time. What, what are they, I beseech your ladyship? Mary, my child, early next Thursday morn, the county Paris at St. Peter's Church shall make thee there a joyful bride. He shall not make me there a joyful bride. I wonder at this haste that I must wed, ere he that should be husband come to woo. I pray you, tell my lord and father, I will not marry yet. Here comes your father. Tell him so yourself, and see how he'll take it at your hands. How now, wife? Have you delivered to her our decree? Aye, sir, but she will none. She gives you thanks. I were the fool were married to her grave. Is she not proud? Doth she not count herself blessed? Unworthy as she is, that we have brought so worthy a gentleman to be her bridegroom? <laughs> Out, you green oh. witness carrion! Out, you begging choice! Oh, Why, what are you mad? Oh, good father, I beseech you on my knees. Hear me with patience, but to speak a word. Hang the young baggage, disobedient wretch. But Thursday is near. Lay hand on heart. Advise. And you be mine, I'll give you to my friend. And you be not, hang, beg, starve, die in the streets, for by my soul I'll ne'er acknowledge thee. Oh, sweet my mother, cast not me away. Talk not to me, for I am done with thee. What sayest thou? Hast thou not a word of joy? Some comfort, sir. I think it best you married Count Paris. Oh, he's a lovely gentleman. I think you are happy in the second match, for it excels your first. Well, thou hast comforted me marvelous much. Agent damnation. Oh, most wicked fiend! Thou and my bosom shall henceforth be twain. All to the friar, to know of his remedy. If all else fail, myself have power to die. On Thursday, sir, the time is very short. My father Capulet will have it so, and I am nothing slow to slack his haste. Uh, look, sir, here comes the lady towards my cell. Happily met, my lady and my wife. Uh, that may be, sir, when I may be a wife. That may be, must be, love, on Thursday next. What must be, shall be. That's a certain text. Are you at leisure, <laughs> holy father, now? My leisure serves me, pensive daughter, now. My lord, we must entreat the time alone. God shield I should disturb devotion. Juliet, on Thursday early will I rouse ye. Till then, adieu and keep this holy kiss. Ah, <laughs> oh, Juliet, I already know thy grief. I hear thou must and nothing may prorogue it. Early Thursday next be married to Paris. Oh, tell me not that thou hearest of it, unless thou tells me how I may prevent it. Hold then. Go home, be married, give consent to marry Paris. Take thou this vial. And this distilled liquor drink thou off. No warmth, no breath shall testify thou livest. And in this borrowed likeness of strong death, thou shalt continue for two and forty hours, and then awake as from a pleasant sleep. In the meantime shall Romeo by my letters know our drift. And that very night shall Romeo bear thee hence to Mantua. This shall free thee from thy present shame, if no inconstant toy nor womanish fear shall prevent thy valor in acting it. Give me, give me! Oh, tell me not of fear! I'll send a friar with speed to Mantua with my letters to thy lord. Love, give me strength, and strength shall help afford. Where have 
have you been gadding? Where I have learned me to repent the sin of disobedient opposition and beg your pardon. Pardon, I beseech you. Henceforward, I am ever ruled by you. Why, I am glad on't. This is as should be. My heart is wondrous light, since this same wayward girl is so reclaimed. <laughs> Farewell. God knows when we shall meet again. I have a faint, cold fear thrills through my veins that freezes up the heat of life. Come, vile. Romeo, I come. This do I drink to thee. For Verona? How now, Benfolio? How fares my Juliet? Is my father well? How doth my lady? That I ask again, for nothing can be ill if she be well. Then she is well, and nothing can be ill. Her body sleeps in Capel's monument, and her immortal parts with angels lives. Is it even so? Then I defy you, stars. Get thee gone. Well, Juliet, I will lie with thee tonight. Let me have a dram of poison, as will disperse itself through all the veins, that the life we retake her may fall dead. Come, cordial and not poison. Go with me to Juliet's grave, for there must I use thee. Holy friend Siskin Friar! <laughs> My letter to Romeo could not be sent. Here it is again! Oh, unhappy fortune! Now must I to the monument alone. The poor Juliet will awake within three hours. Poor living corpse closed in a dead man's tomb. of thy breath hath had no power yet upon thy beauty. Ah, oh, dear Juliet, why art thou yet so fair? Oh, here, 
will I set up my everlasting rest and shake the yoke of inauspicious stars from this world-wearied flesh and lips. O oh, you, the doors of breath, seal with a righteous kiss a dateless bargain to engrossing death. Here's to my love. Thus, with the kiss, I die. I know well where I should be. And there I am. Where is my Romeo? <laughs> What's this? A cup closed in my true love's hand. Poison. I see hath been thy timeless end. be brief. Oh, happy dagger, this is thy sheath. There, rust. Let me die. morning with it brings. The sun, for sorrow, will not show his head. Go hence, to have more talk of these sad things. Some shall be pardoned, and some punished. For never was a story of more woe than, than this, this of Juliet and, and her Romeo. We did talk a lot about how the first half of the show is a comedy, and Till Tybalt kills Mercutio, and then it becomes a tragedy. But watching you guys tonight, there's actually a lot of moments of comedy in the second half as well, and it does go back and forth quickly, and it's, it's exciting. And I think another really cool thing about this ensemble is two actors have had a lot of experience with Shakespeare, and these three, it's their first time ever doing Shakespeare. Really? So Woo! it's like a really <laughs> um, I first fell in love with Shakespeare when I realized he gives it to you, like he gives you everything, you know what I mean? Like all every all the subtext, like it literally is all in there. Stage directions, he literally writes in the text. <laughs> um, and so like I, I sort of realized that a few years ago when I first was playing Romeo and it was like, oh my god, this is what I want to do all the time. Um, yeah. Oh. Do you have a favorite line? Uh, from this play or, oh I really like, um, uh, I really like, the, I think we cut it, it was oh. like, uh, 
uh, it's like on this day, our, our, uh, on this day, other other others must some well, I don't whatever. It's, my, I, it's really my favorite line. I can't remember it. But it's when he realize when it's when it turns from a comedy to a tragedy. Is like on uh, others must end what we've begun, like something like that. And it's like the line that sort of changes it. Yeah. Totally yeah. What else it. for you guys? Like, you can even go down the line. Like, what do you think about late? Like, how um, do you commit to this language? Yeah, I, I really appreciate the uh, sort of metaphors and the play on words. Like, he uses the same word in so many different ways yeah. all the time. One of my favorite scenes in this show is uh, the Paris Juliet Friar scene, where we're sort of playing yeah. uh, on each other's words, and it's just a lot of fun to, uh, yeah. to do that. Yeah, we did cut most of that. <laughs> we rehearsed an hour version of this show, and it was really good. We put it in front of fourth graders, and we lost them. And so we cut 15 minutes from the show, and fourth graders follow this. We don't lose them. Like, they really are long for this whole ride. So that's why we kept cutting things. But yeah, fun. I mean, I have to agree with Skylar and Hayden and just, like, how Shakespeare puts everything into the text and, like, how it's... it's so old, but it's still so relevant, and like, I don't know, I just love it. The the switch from poetry to more, it's, it's great. <laughs> um, mine's kind of the same. I just I just like that he puts all these weird jokes in there that you like don't really get <laughs> at all until you a like well actually flower or something. <laughs> or like <laughs> Mercutio, thou consorts with Romeo. You're like, what does that even mean? Then, but then you like find the joke, and you're like, ha, you're gay. And then, <laughs> 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 Shakespeare. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> um, so I've never done Shakespeare before, and so the first few days of our rehearsal process, um, we had Kate Kenny, who kind of we paraphrased all the lines, so like we translated it into you know, words that made sense to us. Um, and it's definitely easier, because I remember the first time we read through the script, we were all like, because we just, we had, uh, I, I'm not gonna speak for anyone else, I had no idea what was going on. Um, and then that was really helpful. And then also once you understand what you're saying, it's so much easier to get into the character. Um, so yeah. Sorry. Well, <laughs> so I mean, I find performing for little kids to be so, satisfying because like they're so brutally honest yeah. like if they don't yeah. like yeah. it they're not gonna laugh so like, yeah. like getting kids to laugh is like you know that they actually enjoy it and yeah. just and it's been like really cool because like we've had talkbacks and they just have so many questions and they'll yeah. like really understand it like they're say plot points that like like be yeah they ask like super specific yeah, like, yeah. you're like yeah. you go that. one girl was like the montagues and we're like oh my god you're names the big names <laughs> you can do it <laughs> yeah it's also really cool because i feel like you can have more fun with it because you know you can look stupid and kind of just do whatever and the fourth graders find it funny like <laughs> me and skylar find it hilarious when we um hit our cane skin yeah. at the beginning and the fourth graders love that and also when skylar's the nurse obviously that's hilarious oh and fourth graders find that stuff funny too so. it's also fun to watch there's like these moments where it's real when you're fighting on stage it, even though it's foam swords it's real when they're kissing on stage, even though it's, you know, pretend, it's super real and the kids love the kissing. They go, they make like, they're like, oh, yeah. but it's really good. And then also like the vials, the second those vials come out, kids are like, <laughs> and like, and then they drink it and like the kid, you can just see the kids are captivated yeah. by yeah. real life It's so stage. silent once we get to like the last scene, like no kids are talking and it's great. <laughs> My favorite like, part so in... uh, with the kids is like during the asides, making eye contact yeah. with them. There's always a few in the audience that are like really locked in and that's always nice to be like, okay, I got a few of them that are really with me on it. That's always nice to I nice think. To my favorite moment with the kids was when she wakes up and she's like, oh, where's my Romeo? And the kids in the front row were like, he's, he's dead. dead right here. <laughs> we were like, oh, they got it. I got to laugh. I was like, it is Gatorade. It is a, like a blue raspberry and like a cherry or red, red you know, red. whatever. That I think it's the flavor's red. The I flavor is, <laughs> is red. And also it was fun to think about because I was like, 
I re- we cut the apothecary, so we decided to have the friar bring in both mm. sleep and death and contemplate them, and they are the house colors. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah. yeah, so Kate Kenny is um, an actor friend of mine. We've done like 10 shows together, and she's our director of Shakespeare in the schools. And I said, hey, we got five actors. Can you make an hour-long cut? And she did, but it was actually an hour 15. So then we cut it down again together, and then, we cu- then I made that last 15-minute cut after watching the reactions in the school. But I have to say... Of the timeline. <laughs> yeah, but it was <laughs> interesting to... like. It was so brutal. We only rehearsed so for two sad. weeks. So we I both worked for four days, rehearsed in like a week and a half, and then we're in front of audiences. So... But like every line, like I didn't want to, we didn't want to yeah, cut anything. Like, At least like I didn't want to. We had yeah. the hour version, we did it for one school. <laughs> and then, then we, we had again. rehearsal that night for two hours and we cut it to 45 <laughs> minutes. And then that night, or and the, the next, next day, we had to um, memorize that through. cut <laughs> and do it for the first run through. And then it was still too long, it apparently. No, it wasn't too long. There's just break, moments. And two more scenes. <laughs> At every lunch show, break, we just cut a line. Break, break. Lunch break, we cut two more scenes. Two I mean, more parts, and then we had to do that version. Yeah, the same day. Day. The same we love Practice, you, rehearsal. We love you, Eric. But I think the. <laughs> I mean, that's real life, but also, it was watching. I mean, I've got a great view of the fourth grade audience from my seat over here, and I could see. Like, they were super with it through the fights in the middle, and then those two scenes where each learns that the other, one is banished and that Romeo is, that each learns of the banishment. <laughs> or also, yeah. um, like, when the nurse is, like, trying to marry us, like, the nurse comes to me and is like, yeah, and I'm like, yeah. And yeah. Like, well, yeah. I could just, I could just. Yeah. Very intellectual yeah. <laughs> examination of those scenes. I could see that the fourth graders were like, I'm not quite following this anymore. So we cut like four lines from each scene and then they're like, I'm with it. But the major cut. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. So after, so after the balcony yeah, scene, like they're like, we cut like five pages when the nurse yeah. is going back and forth and being like, will you come to the church to see Romeo? And Juliet's like, okay, yeah, I'll do it. And so instead the line is, if you mean marriage, come to church tomorrow and I'll meet thee. So then he's like, hey, I want to marry Juliet. And the friar says, here comes your lady. <laughs> Yeah. It's like a five-page cut. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it works though. Who, you know? And we also we also cut Paris from the final scene. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Paris used to be putting the rose petals over the grave, and then they had a nice fight, and he got killed. But it was like just one too many deaths. Yeah. And like we we love Paris, and we didn't want to. We don't want to die. die. <laughs> yeah. Dawsonbrook made us these cards, and they were just like. Basically, we cannot wait to do Shakespeare in the spring That's and like okay. after You're the show. Shakespeare and yeah. stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but they're coming up to the actors afterwards and just saying, "We cannot wait to do this. What play are we gonna do?" And it's it's just sort of a miracle yeah, because funny. these are kids that are not going to come to Northern Stage. They are very far away with families that aren't really interested in theater, and so it's pretty cool. It's like we'll go to you. Yeah. Thank oh, you for seeing so us. We'll see you in the lobby. Yeah. Love you guys. friends and family, you will put this up. Thank you. I'm sweat patches.